Howdy folks, I'm Saccharin Sweet Pea, serenely sending syrupy salutations. I'm Amber. And folks, I love you. I love you all. Sweet saccharin salutations. Let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for refusing to spend money on my brother-in-law's wedding? I'm a 29-year-old female, partner is a 28-year-old male, and has a brother who is a 35-year-old male, and a sister who is a 32-year-old female. His sister has two children. Last year, her youngest child, a 2-year-old male, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It has been a huge adjustment, and my sister-in-law and family have had a hard time keeping his condition under control. They were looking at purchasing a pump to help manage his diabetes. A pump would drastically help keep his levels under control and would improve his day-to-day -day life of my nephew and his parents. The problem is that the pump is expensive. Most cost between $5,000 and $10,000. And my sister-in-law and her partner do not have access to this kind of money. They had been saving money towards it, but are still a while off. My partner and I have two young children and can't imagine being in their position. For this reason, we offer to pay for the pump. We are not wealthy. We are living off my partner's income as an electrician while I stay at home with two children. But we budget and we always make sure that we have money set aside. My sister-in-law and her partner declined our offer to pay for the pump as they managed to get a pump paid for by their health insurance. Great. Win-win. Case closed. Or so I thought well about a month after we had offered them the money my partner's brother got engaged his fiance has disabilities that prevent her from working she also has extremely expensive tastes shortly after the engagement we all met up for dinner and congratulated them at one point they stood up to do a speech to thank everyone for their support etc etc all completely normal until they turned to my partner and I and thanked us for helping them to pay for their dream wedding. I was confused, but I didn't want to say anything in the moment. After the speech, we pulled them aside and asked them what they were referring to. They explained that they had heard that we had offered to pay for the pump, which we are not doing so now. So therefore, we had $10,000 to spare. They reasoned that we were planning on spending it on money, and this is the same kind of thing. We were stunned. My partner explained to them that we didn't feel that this was the same at all. A diabetes pump helps keep our nephew alive. A wedding is hardly the same. My brother-in-law got mad and accused us of favoring their sister. He said that we were willing to part ways with the money before, so he didn't understand why we wouldn't do that now. I told him that we were only going to spend the money on the pump, otherwise it would stay in our emergency fund. He called us selfish and then we left early. After we left, we received texts from the other family members taking his side and guilting us into paying towards the wedding since his partner won't be able to. I didn't think that we did anything wrong, but now these messages have me questioning. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? No, not the jerk. There's a huge difference between life-saving medical equipment and a party. And I mean, this is your money. So even if they were analogous situations, you would still be in your right to say no. And, the, the, you know, he shouldn't try and guilt and manipulate you. Uh, but this is a party to expect you to be like, well, you were going to give my sister money to save her kid, but you won't throw it away on my party. I don't know about that, Amber. I mean, I think like this was an emergency fund money, right? And this is an emergency wedding. Don't you see? They're equal. No. Emergency wedding. Keeping your nephew alive. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, no. clearly the same thing. I, I I don't know why they would think that OP would pay for this. I think what they were hoping is that they would like corner Back them. Back them into a corner. Yeah, exactly. So this is like when sometimes people will do these public proposals and stuff like that to like corner someone and to coerce them into doing something that they don't necessarily want to do this feels very coercive it mm -hmm. feels very controlling yeah it seems like the kind of thing that a, a person who is just really trying to push you to into a corner would do exactly like they know what they're doing they are being manipulative and they know it mm -hmm. um and just you don't need to give them the money and anyone who sides with them is in the wrong yeah so I don't think that OP is in the wrong here. And I think that 
it, when OP is receiving all these texts, they can say, well, you're welcome to contribute to their wedding fund. Well, exactly. Yeah. All those people who are bullying OP is like, oh, you can pay the $10,000 now. Yeah. It's important to have money in an emergency fund, right? right? That's the point of an emergency fund. The nephew's condition was an emergency, mm -hmm. and that's why they agreed to use that money for an, the emergency fund, right? Now, I'm really glad that the insurance ended up paying for it. I mean, the quality of life, hopefully, for the child will be a lot better here. And I think that they really, when people feel entitled to your money, it really kind of shows what kind of person they are. Mm -hmm. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And got to think about it says, not the jerk. And your brother and family supporting him are the jerks. You were willing to dip into your family's emergency fund to help save a life. You indicated that the money wasn't easily available. You have it because you worked hard to save for it. Your brother could work extra hours to save up enough money to get the big fancy wedding, or they can change their expectations and have a wedding that they can afford. If you don't provide the money, no one's health will be seriously impacted. However, to expect you to fork over that money for an event without asking is unforgivable. And Callie Girl 2421 says, exactly, keywords save a life. Saving a life and throwing a party are two completely different things. Unless your life is partying, you live that party rock and roll lifestyle, and all you can do to keep yourself alive is continue to party. <laughs> now we have a loophole. Let's get to it. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> I need a lot of money to throw a big party. <laughs> <laughs> this, with this rock and roll lifestyle you got going? Yeah, this is the rock and roll lifestyle I've got going on. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for not giving my boyfriend 50% of my rental income? I'm a 46-year-old female and my partner, a 57-year-old male of five years, are talking about moving in together after my kids from a previous marriage have moved out. He has fully paid off his house and I have a house with a mortgage. It's likely that I will have to move into his house as it's bigger and that I rent out my house with a rental income of about $600 per week. When we spoke about how to manage our finances, he suggested that I pay off all of the bills and groceries plus 50% of my rental income that I received from my house. Paying half of all the bills and groceries, I completely understand, but half of my rental income to him, even though he has no mortgage, I didn't think that was fair. I didn't quite understand why he wanted me to give him 50% of my rental income. He then explained to me that in case that we break up, he doesn't want to feel like I have taken advantage of him in living situation. And to make things fair, we should chip in 50-50 to everything. I don't feel like this is a 50-50 deal though. It's more like an 80-20 deal with him benefiting more than me. I would pay a maximum of $150 a week rent plus groceries and bills. This is around the amount that I'm willing to pay, not $300 a week plus bills and groceries. As a side note, my income is around $75,000 a year and his is around $85,000 a year, half of which comes from his rental and his own investment properties. Am I the jerk for not giving him 50% of my rental income if I move in with him? All right, folks, what do you think? I mean, if he is asking for 50% of your rental income, why not get 50% of his rental income? Yeah. He says he wants things to be 50-50, and apparently that means forking over part of your salary. Yeah, I think that this is one of those situations where he isn't viewing this as fair. I think... OP is paying off their house, their mm -hmm. mortgage, right? And if they were to sell it right now, suppose they were to sell it, that money wouldn't half go to him, mm -hmm. right? She wouldn't be necessarily earning additional money, but she would be able to take that money and do something else with it, right? Suppose she then takes that money and invests it in the stock market, right? Would he feel entitled to half of the income that she earns off of the stock market. Right? I mean, he might anyway. It sounds like he's just looking to profit off of her. His yeah. whole argument makes no sense because he's saving money by having OP split the bills with him. Yeah. Like that's the discount he gets. And so he'd be like, well, you'd be taking advantage of me. And she's lowering your bills. Like that's the deal. And if you don't want that, then don't live with a partner. But it just seems like he wants to take advantage of her. OP should make a counteroffer. OP say, 
Actually, why don't we move into my house, you rent out your house, and I'll get 50% of what you pay for it get out of rent. Fair is fair. I mean, she's offered her to him to move in, but her place is too small for his taste. Well, t tough noogies at that point. Yeah, time, like, right? Opie, keep your, keep your house. Maybe rethink this relationship. Do you really want to be with someone who's just trying to profit off of you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think she should turn this around and just do the exact same offer that he has right now. Actually, you know what? I realize that you're completely right. I would be taking advantage of you. Let's reverse the situation. You rent out your place. I get 50% of that income. We'll call it fair, right? See how fast he decides that that's not a fair situation. I'm, per I'm guessing pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Pretty fast. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And TC Invec Ock says, I'm curious if OP is in Australia or a state slash country with a common law marriage. In Australia, if you live with someone for at least six months, but generally two years, you are considered de facto and are able to take half of everything in some situations. By OP paying rent and 50% of the finances if they're separated, and if they split up, the outcome is different. This is also affects inheritance outcomes as well. I don't know if this is the case, but more info, info is required. And OP replies, I'm from Australia, and I'm aware of the de facto relationship status and the entitlement after living together for two years. Hence, I would not want him paying for my mortgage if he were to be living in my house. And I would also get him to sign a BFA, which is a binding financial agreement, if he were to move into my house. And I imagine OP is probably signing something like that if she's living with him. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for throwing out my boyfriend's phone after he wouldn't stop making rabbit stew jokes while I was grieving my bunny? A few days ago, my boyfriend was visiting my flat, and while I was preparing soup for us for a dinner, I also fed my rabbit some greens. I noticed that my bun bun, who was the senior bunny at age 9, wasn't eating the greens, and even more alarmingly, she wasn't able to walk more than about 10 paces without falling flat onto her stomach. Bunnies are very sensitive creatures, and I knew that I needed to take Bun Bun to the vet. I explained the situation to my boyfriend, and he seemed to be okay with it. However, he did seem annoyed that he wasn't going to be able to eat dinner now because I had to stop making it to take Bun Bun to the vet. At the vet, Bun Bun suffered a heart attack and passed away. I texted my boyfriend the bad news, and he seemed like he was also very sad about Bun Bun's death. I have another bunny called Flopsy, and since they are bonded bunnies, I had to take Bun Bun's body back so that Flopsy could process that Bun Bun was dead. I came back in tears and placed Bun Bun's body on the ground. Flopsy snipped the body and then thumped his feet. My boyfriend, however, thought that this was now a good time to make a joke and said something along the lines of, I'm rather hungry for dinner. Maybe Bun Bun could go into the soup and make some nice rabbit stew. I told him that Bun Bun's body was going to stay there for a few hours so that Flopsy could process that Bun Bun had passed away, and he seemed to understand. I kept preparing the soup, and after a few minutes, the boyfriend started singing, Run, rabbit, run, run, rabbit, run, bang, bang, goes the farmer's gun. He'll get by without his rabbit pie, so run, rabbit, run, 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 run. I raised my voice at him, and I told him to stop making jokes about rabbits dying, and that I was grieving my bunny. He told me that Bun Bun was just a stupid rabbit and that I should get over her, and then showed me a YouTube video on his phone about how to kill a wild rabbit. I was absolutely livid. I took his phone and I threw it out the window. I live on the third floor, so his phone probably didn't survive, but at that moment I didn't care. I screamed at him to get out of my flat. Alright folks, what do you think? Nah, the jerk. I'll give Opie a pass on destruction of property here. What he did is despicable, repeatedly making these insensitive jokes and trying showing her videos about how to kill rabbits. Like, it's it's monstrous. Some people process grief differently, and maybe he was in shock, but I don't think he gets a pass at all in this particular case, right? Like, sometimes people feel a little better about, like, yo uh looking on uh, like a, a funny side or something like that if they're in shock or if they're you know they are having a hard time processing things but i don't really feel like 
this necessarily is indicative of what is happening here. It feels more like he's just being a cruel individual. Well, telling her that Bun Bun was just, you know, a bunny and she needs to get over it. Like, he's very dismissive of her yeah. grief. And if your natural reaction to grief is inappropriate humor, then maybe process in your own space mm -hmm. and don't, like, if you know someone's going to be hurt by what you're saying, don't be around them. Well, and I mean, I think going back to the whole, he didn't seem to, care mm -hmm. right he said it's just a dumb rabbit right if he was completely devastated by this and was just like unable to kind of cope with it it would be you know i wouldn't expect him to say a comment like oh mm -hmm. you can't you can't grieve over a rabbit right mm -hmm. pets are pets it doesn't matter if it's goldfish it doesn't matter if it's a pet spider they're still your beloved pet right and you can't put a price on a beloved pet like that and i think that his comments are very cruel and insensitive and i think that hopefully he is their ex at this point yeah in i was time. gonna say the same thing but let me know what you folks think so anyhow take care and good luck and hot razzmatazz 1143 says break up important to tell your next prospective boyfriend that you brought a dead animal home for another animal to process it and OP replies, I brought Bun Bun's body home for Flopsy to process the death under the advice of the veterinarian who studied specifically for the care of rabbits for many years. I mean, I think people need to be not quite so judgmental about those kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's always, even ra even pets need some kind of closure. I mean, sometimes animals get very sad at the sudden disappearance of another pet, right? Well, they may be confused, too, and not understand what mm -hmm. happened. If it's just suddenly, you know, Bun Bun is there and then Bun Bun isn't. Yeah. They're not necessarily going to know Bun Bun died. Mm-hmm. So I think that animals also need to grieve and process in their own way. And it's unfair to say that they don't need that closure of some kind. And... I do not even want to know, says, not the jerk. I am so sorry for your loss. As a rabbit owner, I think that you learned and did everything that you could, and your buns are lucky to have you. They are so fickle health-wise and socially, and your partner clearly didn't care for Bun Bun or what they meant to you. Anyone who's showing a pet owner a video of how to execute the wild counterpart of their companion is deranged, especially so soon after a loss. He is not mature enough for a relationship, and I'm sorry you had to find out during an already tough time. Those videos are rough on their own and entirely unnecessary, add after a pet passing in an unrelated natural way. That is the behavior of internet trolls. Your reaction is entirely warranted. You weren't lashing out due to bare grief, but callously emotionally abused and had had enough. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I have a beverage of choice, and it's far more tasty than the joke that we're about to be served. All your friends who are going away will promise to write, but the only mail you'll get will be an overdue book notice from the library. That's because you stopped stealing books, jovial Bob Stein. <laughs> Just maybe a thought. Maybe return your books and don't steal them. And I have licorice spice or the throat coat tea. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy special Sunday, folks. And you know what makes it special? You do. And Amber does, too. And Brian does, too. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please have it in the form of a Hallmark card. Congratulations on your impending matrimony. Remember, what matters is you and your love, not the money. I think that works. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!